Hey everyone, Kathy LaPointe, Pioneer Field Agronomist for the Front Range in Northeast Colorado. And today we're talking about kernel tip dieback uh, versus unpollinated kernels and then what causes each of those. So this is an ear that has kernels on the tip that have gone unpollinated. You can see that they were never initiated, they're completely flat. Whereas this kernel, this cob here, you can see where kernels were pollinated and then sucked back uh, post-pollination. So what's causing each of those things? So if you step back at a physiological level, pollination and early grain fill are the most critical times to try to avoid stressing this plant. Water demand is at its peak, fertility demand is at its peak, and this is a key yield determining time for corn. Now, when the corn plant pollinates, the first three weeks or so after pollination is when kernels are beginning to differentiate and determine which fertilized ovules are going to become productive kernels with an embryo in them. So when you see kernel tip die back, that's when that plant initiates, you know, pollinated these kernels. All of those kernels then compete for water and nutrients. Those closest to the base are closest to that source. And so typically, if that corn plant's under some kind of stress, after pollination into early grain fill, you'll see this kernel tip dieback or sucking back of kernels. Contrast that here, there was some stress during pollination. In this case, in this part of the world, we were really, really hot through pollination. So you can see where some of those kernels didn't pollinate at all, um, just because of the, some of the extreme temperatures that we have. So if you zoom out even further, why is that? Like the corn pollinates in heat all the time, what's the big deal? So this comes back to vapor pressure deficit. And vapor pressure deficit takes into account relative humidity plus temperature. So lower relative humidity plus higher temperature means more transpiration of water through the corn plant. Believe it or not, this is crazy statistics. If you move temperatures from mid 80s into the mid 90s, you actually double the water consumption of a corn plant. And so when you have continued temperatures, prolonged temperatures in the 90s, like we had through pollination and early grain fill, you're bound to see some kind of stress eventually take hold, even though we're blessed with cool nights here. Um, those high temperatures take a toll on the plant after a while. It starts to say, hey, I don't have enough moisture in the soil, enough access to nutrients in order to support all of these kernels that I thought I could produce when I was in mid vegetative stages, determining number of kernel rows around and kernels to fill that, that, um, that length. So anyways, just some differentiation if you see mispollination versus kernel tip dieback to help you understand when that stress occurred. If, there, if it wasn't pollinated, um, it's because there was some stress during pollination timing that affected either um, pollen grain viability or um, perhaps some other environmental factors that led to pollen drop not being as strong as we needed it to be. Or if you have tip kernel dieback, that stress post-pollination, that can be cloud cover, that can be continued high temps, anything that makes that plant determine it doesn't have the resources that it needs to support all the kernels it pollinated and pulling those back. So if you have questions about what you're seeing out in the field or you have um, other environmental concerns, reach out to your local Pioneer Rep or field agronomist. We're happy to walk through that with you and look at some corn if you have concerns. Thanks. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.